All right, everyone, welcome back from another episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Friday, July 15th, 2022. If you like the content, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment, come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Get in while you can. It's only $15 a month. Uh, price will be going up pretty soon here. Um, and for right now, it's cheaper than a Prime membership. And I'm actually trying to make you money unlike Jeff Bezos. So get in on that. Uh, while you can anyways here markets with a nice rally day here gapping up really on the back of bank earnings so yesterday we had the gap down take a look at jp morgan here getting smoked yesterday up basically recouped all those losses and then some today up five percent morgan stanley up five percent as well we talked about that one how that was close to the flat line yesterday um so that one that one was showing relative strength even though it made a 52 week low nominally very briefly it made a 52 week low yesterday but rallied back to the flat line and getting up there yesterday well the banks reported today uh city group look at that surge up 14 percent, almost 15 percent at one point here uh just slightly off the highs here but uh, now above that 50 day moving average you blew through this gap blew through the 20 the 50 um so it looks like near term maybe you're headed up for that 100 and this is also the area that you kind of broke down from. So that's probably where it wants to go in the near term before stalling out. Wells Fargo as well, uh, performing well here, gapping right above that 20 and then right into the 50-day moving average here. So that one is pulling back a little bit. This one may have a little bit upside to gap fill there at about 42.50. But again, a strong day for the other financials, even uh, Schwab uh, reporting. So that one up 2.6. You know, not as not as strong of a move here. Uh, but again, the big winner again today. So we talked about Taiwan Semi yesterday up 1.8. Um, that is helping the semis out. So up another 2.3. So again, a, little, a possible little um, you know up move and then like an ABC. So a little flag pattern and then a pop here. So semis and banks um, following through uh, today. And those are the big winners here. So nice move. And that is helping out the market. You see we gapped up here on the spiders. Kind of had a little surge. And now we're just kind of consolidating uh bullish here on the hourly if you want to take a look here on the hour um you can see this is kind of our area here so this is where it stalled out but we're consolidating starting to put in a little bull flag beneath that 200 hour moving average so it looks like this market wants to go up there maybe next week and challenge that 388 area there on the spiders maybe 390 um and on the daily well this is a weekly here but you can see the weekly we got a nice little inside so up move and the little inside one two three pullback so nothing terrible there on the weekly but on the daily, you know, that would coincide, that 390 area would coincide with this down sloping uh, trend line, which goes all the way back to April. Um, then remember yesterday, we, we talked about we got rid of that trend line here, this lower one, because it just been violated too many times. But you could almost make a case. I wanted to put it back on here just to show you guys. You could almost make a case you had a little fake breakdown here. So we came down um, Wednesday, rallied off the lows, but then closed below it. Then we, you know, gapped lower yesterday on the JPM uh, earnings. And Morgan Stanley earnings and then we rallied back up today so or, or yesterday rather and now we're gapping back up above the 20 and pushing up here so you know a possible little fake breakdown there you know we'll have to see if it if it follows through next week you can see we talked about the triple Q's here um, being much stronger if we can get another push on the Q's um, you know it's gonna be close to this 50-day moving average in this downsloping trend line here but you know, nothing to say, you know, if we don't get a, you know, if we get a good move over the weekend, we could gap above this. And that would take you up to that 302, 303 area there on the triple Qs, which would be really good resistance. Don't get me wrong, but um, that's a pretty good percentage move there uh, in the near term on the Qs. And again, they've been holding up better. Again, with the recession talk in place, big tech is going to outperform things like banks and energy. So that does hurt the S&P more so than the NASDAQ. So that's why we're seeing the NASDAQ leading here. But overall, a decent move here for the indices. Take a look at the IWM, uh, up 2% uh, now today, back above the 20 moving average. And again, you know, it's still making these higher lows here, daily chart higher lows. You're back above these old trend lines here. Um, and again, you know, upside probably near term is that 50 moving average. Again, the Russell has been a little bit on the weaker side. It does have lower highs here. So we have to respect that. And then um, next area, would be this down soaping trend line right there. So that also kind of coinciding with that late March, early April area that we just showed you on the spiders there. But overall, you know, not a terrible move here for the markets. Um, here's the diamond. Again, nice little pop here. Actually a big pop on the diamond up almost 2%. That's a big move for the Dow. Um, so again, nice move here overall. Um, and there's a good chance we could, you know, maybe even have a little pop 
in the last half hour. It is about 3.30 right now, so we'll see what we get here moving forward. But looks like the algos are just turned on. And um, remember, it is an OPEX Friday, so we do expect this type of whipsaw move. So we had that kind of move down into the middle of the week here and then a reversal towards the end of the week. You know, they had call buyers bagged early on in the week and then around, you know, yesterday afternoon or really yesterday morning, you see we gapped down yesterday morning now they you know they suckered in the put buyers and then they've just taken it the other way so that is typical opex action here um, but overall you know again looking at the weekly time frame um, not a really terrible pullback pattern here and again we talked about the possibility of a summer rally here there's the triple q's um, this is the type of action you want to see on the weekly if that's going to set up so again we got to see follow through next week um, but overall it does look like we're in kind of a summer doldrums type market um, the volume has declined pretty, you know, pretty noticeably. Take a look at the volume today. Um, just 58 million shares. We got about a half an hour left to go. So we do have that light volume bias going on and uh, we'll see what we get next week. But again, you got to take it one day at a time here and uh, don't fall in love with too many uh, stocks or patterns. And, you know, take a look at the IGV here. We talked about the semis, but notice how the IGV was really the, the leader here for a while as far as tech is concerned. And then this week really started to roll over. That could just be OPEX games. You know, it is getting a nice bounce today. That could be OPEX games. Um, it very well might be. Um, we'll see if it can come back up here and challenge this trend line one more time next week. If it can, um, then, you know, you got upside to that 300 handle and change. Um, but again, overall, IGV getting a little bit of a bid here. But those OPEX games can really change things. And we talked about this, the semis. Uh, became the leader they were you know underperforming igv for a while and then sometime this week that really changed over and you're seeing this three bar three bar pop there for the smh uh whereas the igv is only just getting a pop today and it was down pretty sharply tuesday wednesday thursday so definitely a little bit of rotation going on um xbi continues to remain strong this is still flagging here but again lots of resistance here so just keep that in mind um you know, I do like some of these biotechs, like take a look at uh, Intellia. This is a beautiful bull flag here. The problem is you just you have so much resistance here. So I don't really see a whole lot of upside on it. But again, they're doing, you know, they're, they're putting in the right patterns here. Um, they have nice moves, you know, nice little daily chart patterns above these moving averages is what you want to see them do. Uh, I just think that there's a lot of resistance. I mean, this is basically two months, three months of consolidation here, and it's not going to get taken out with just one week of... Um, of you know flagging so just keep that in mind but biotech still a strong sector and we'll definitely keep that on the radar dow transports here today finally catching a bid the jets here are a little bit on the weaker side you know up 1.78 percent here delta um nice recovery off the lows it did, did slightly make higher lows here after that gap down there last week um the rails have been weak though but they are popping up nicely today norfolk southern there you see um, UNP also with a decent day. Um, so that is helping out the transports, JB Hunt, uh, XPO. So trucking names getting a little bit of a bid. Um, FedEx here, you know, up a little bit. So again, nothing, nothing great here, but they are coming off the lows. We did make a new 52 week low yesterday on the transports. It's trying to reclaim that 20 moving average. Um, again, this is just a situation where uh, if the market can get a bid, the transports will get a bid. So the rising tide will lift all boats. But this is still a really, really weak sector right now. And that has to be respected. Doesn't mean it can't squeeze if we do get a squeeze. Um, because there's, you know, likely a lot of shorts in some of these names, given how, how far they've fallen off the highs. But um, right now, they remain weak in a very weak technical position. Uh, let's talk about interest rates here. So rates TNX. Really kind of a quiet day. So a 1% move in the bond market years ago would have been like a, a huge move. Um, that's par for the course today. It's actually just, it's almost just kind of like a non-event uh, in today's bond market. But 10-year did uh, basically just have a flat day here. Same thing with the 30-year, down just 32 basis points. So nothing crazy. Again, we're watching these trend lines here, upsloping trend line. If that breaks, it does trigger a head and shoulders. The same thing with the 30 years so there's that flat trend line if that breaks it will trigger a head and shoulders again it's got you know you got that 100 it's going to be good support i don't expect it to just crash through there um so it, you know and rate and yields have been pretty strong so we have to give them that upside bias um but the market if the market does get a sniff that we're going into a, like confirming some type of recession um that will tell the bond market that 
the Fed is going to pivot sooner rather than later. So that will change how the bond market behaves. Just keep that in mind uh, moving forward. So again, got to watch that. Everything's all about the Fed, right? So if, the, if it's all about the Fed pivot, bonds are going to act accordingly. accordingly and um, you know those patterns could coincide. So if we start to see those come down uh, into that, you know this area here and it does break don't be surprised if there's you know talk about you know the market pricing in a fed pivot basically that's what we're going to call it anyways um so hyg here finally getting above this level here so we've been talking about this for about a week or two now so we're at 74 um let's see the high here 75.39 i believe that is the highest so yeah 75.39 75.36 we're right hammering right on that right now today and we got again 30 minutes left let's see what kind of pattern we got intraday here on the hyg yeah so it's eh, i wouldn't really call this a bull flag it's kind of just an exhausted kind of pop here get the 10 minute yeah but it's just chugging along nicely here so Strong move here for high yield debt. Again, if it can get above this, that would really kind of bode well for the market over the next couple of weeks. It's gonna have a lot of resistance up here at 76.25, that uh, 50 moving average, there's your gap window. Um, also kind of this is where you broke down from. So there's a lot of resistance up there, but if you can you know, get a nice move, um, that will lift the market. And just, just getting up into this range here will, will give the market a little bit of a bid. Um, but again, high yield debt also is kind of one of those things you want to watch here. If this starts ripping all of a sudden um, and rates start pulling back tremendously on the 10 and 30 year, that could be signaling some type of a bond pivot. So be careful of that. Just keep that on your radar as well. All right, so let's flip over here to home builders. So XHB getting a nice bid here today. And again, kind of a sideways pattern. Just again, up move and just really sloppy consolidation beneath this gap here. We did fill the gap earlier this week, but again, just kind of an ABC up potentially. Again, I don't expect it to get much through 61. Um, and ITB, same kind of deal. Um, so just an up move and then sideways chop here beneath this moving average. Again, I don't see it getting through uh, 60 bucks at this current time. Um, overall, um, let's take a look here. Sorry, just bear with me one second. I lost my camera there. Okay. Um, anyways, ITB here. So continuing sideways just beneath this gap. Yes. Yeah, so 60 bucks, um, down sloping 100 moving average. That's kind of your max move right now. But again, kind of like the, I, the uh, XBI we talked about, just look at all this consolidation here. It's not going to get taken out with just a week or so. But again, ITB, it's holding up well, and we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now. Um, VNQ, again, same thing. We had this pullback pattern, possible little fake breakdown again. So kind of like the spiders, we got back below support. And then we got a pop today, gapping up above the 20. So VNQ is in position for an advance here. But again, uh, I don't see it getting much through 96 or 97. That would be kind of like your max, max move there uh, for VNQ. Uh, all right, moving on here. So we talked about uh, semis. All right, yeah, so let's go to fins. So we talked about City and Morgan Stanley, you know, JPM, all nice bids today, uh, City Group, or excuse me, Wells Fargo. So nice moves here. We do have Goldman reporting next week, I believe. Um, but this one is getting a sympathy bid anyway, but regardless, XLF up 3.3% here, getting back above this green bar low. So that is a good sign. It's still a weak sector though. We gotta, gotta respect that. Still a weak sector here. Um, AXP, if we, we haven't really talked about the credit cards here in a while, but uh, Visa getting a nice bid up 1.5, MasterCard right into that 50 moving average. Still a weak sector, but it is coming off the lows, and we got to respect that for now. XBD broker dealers still struggling with this pivot. If you can get above that, I give it the upside bias to 410, though. So broker dealers, again, still remain to be in a stronger position here. The Goldman's, the Morgan Stanley's of the world are holding up better uh, than the JP Morgan's and, you know, the money center banks. So Definitely keep note of that. Uh, move on here to energy. So crude, again, kind of a quiet day. A um, little bit of a bid here going up, getting into that 200 moving average. Nice little tail candle. So this may have a lower high in place here. Um, or not in place, but I'm thinking it comes up here to make a lower high. But it's getting a, may have a bounce in place, we'll say. 
Um, and we're looking for maybe a little bit over 100. I'm, I don't think it can get much through that 20 moving average. Maybe it can back test this trend line, but then that would potentially give you a higher high. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But overall, um, I've been saying crude's into corrective mode. You, you got a nice bounce off that 50 week moving average. And um, again, this pivot is holding on a weekly basis. So again, maybe a little bit of a bounce in the cards here on crude. Um, but overall, I'm expecting a move lower into that $85 to $80 handle. XLE, same thing. Again, it's amazing how quickly these go from market leaders to weak. I mean, look at the, the bounce on this, just 1.5%. And then, you know, you look at, you know, Citigroup today, and you look at even the spiders today up 1.6. Um, look at the size of that bounce here compared to XLE here. Just It's just amazing how fast they become under for porn how fast the market uh, rotates and certain stocks become underperformers, excuse me, underperformers. Uh, have a tough video today. Anyways, nice little sell-off here on OIH, getting back above this pivot, but again, oversold, should get a bounce up to that 220 area. Um, same thing with the XOP, maybe up to that 200 or uh, 20 moving average there. And then you have this red bar high at about 125. So um, it's gonna be a tough area here. I do expect energy to move lower. It's got lower to go, but again, it's very oversold in the short term, so nothing to say it can't get a bid. And then we've got Nat Gas here coming off the lows and a nice little pop here. So I wasn't sure if it would be able to get it through that red bar high. It has done that, so it's holding up okay. Um, and I'll give it the upside bias to at least this trend line right now and maybe that 50, 50 moving average, so around 750. So that's kind of what I'm seeing for max move there on Nat Gas in the near term. But for all things, all things considered, got a nice little pop there and it's holding up pretty well at the moment. Uh, dollar index, nice little reversal today. You know, nothing crazy. Um, I don't, I wouldn't call this a, you know, a major reversal candle. Um, you'd really need to see a lot more red on the screen here. But, you know, it did come off the highs. It did put in a little bit of a tail yesterday. I would have felt a lot better if it got closer to 110 and then put in a major reversal here um, before calling any sort of top in the dollar. Um, but, you know, it did, you know, it pulled back nicely today. Um, that is giving gold a little bit of a lift. It's still kind of red off the lows here. Um, I think a lot of this is OPEX related, though, uh, for what that's worth. Um, but the dollar index is pulling back a little bit. It's definitely helping out the equity markets here uh, as we got that nice gap up today. But uh, gold here, again, I still think it's into some short term support. I think it'll get a bid here, but I do think it also is headed lower in the in the more kind of medium term. Uh, but again, it is short term oversold. Same thing with silver. Nice little bid here, um, trying to defend that 18 handle. So nice little pop there for silver. I do expect it to get a counter trend move, maybe up to that $20 area. Uh, same thing with platinum. Nice little pop holding that 820 area, which I think is a very good support level. So I do expect that to reverse course pretty shortly. And then palladium kind of bucking the trend here as this is starting to break down again as well so this maybe you know palladium is a tough market because it's very thin so it's very hard to very hard to chart this um, but it does look like it wants to break down to that uh that double bottom there around 15 20 15 30 so palladium weak it's, it's very tough though as you can see that you get these big moves and then they get faded immediately there's just it's just such a thin market it's very hard to get a gauge on but again getting below that trend line there so we'll be careful with that one and then copper yeah, another 50. I mean, I feel like every single day I'm in here. Yep, another 52 week low here on copper. I mean, just look at this one, two, three, four days in a row. Uh, and then last week we made 52 week lows. One, two, three. F I mean, 52 week lows pretty much every single day, um, or at least every week here since June 6th. So that was your last 52 week low. And then just down, 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 down. So this thing is way oversold. Um, it's due for a bounce, you know, just kind of like I was saying with those energy stocks, it's kind of the same thing. It's so oversold. It's due for a good bounce here, but I do think it is headed lower here at some point, possibly sub three bucks. So we'll take a look at this one moving forward. I do think it gets a bit into that 20 moving average at some point, uh, at the very least, a counter trend rally there. Um, but again, still remains a weak sector and you got to be careful with it. All right, here over to Bitcoin. Um, so a nice move down again, we got below that green bar low. And I said, you know, this might want to go down and challenge that uh, 15 or excuse me, 18 two area, possibly even double bottom. But, you know, it's it got back up above the, the uh, 20 moving average. Um, so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now. It's definitely showing a little bit of strength here finally. Um, but still, you've got to get above these pivots here. You're still making lower highs. 
you know you do have technically higher lows in place you know you did you did put that in place with the uh, pivot the other day so wednesday you just barely made a higher low here so you got three of them now um, so that is a good little sign there for bitcoin in the near term but it's got to get above this 22 area 22 and then again the same thing here that 22,989 area um, is going to be kind of the major level but you know i'd say there's a there's a puncher's chance for bitcoin to do that um, the longer it takes to start moving up here the more minor this 50 moving average becomes though so that is also another little positive there for bitcoin is if it can consolidate long enough down here um, this 50 moving average will get more and more minor so there is a chance that if you do get a bid you can get through that and maybe up to 22 maybe 22,500 somewhere in that area um, before kind of pulling back and stalling out. And then obviously your, your max, max upside would be about 28,000. Um, that's really the, the big breakdown area here. Um, but again, like I said yesterday, remember just the inside bar here. This is a weekly inside bar. It's bearish and it's played out several times here over the last year. Um, so just be careful with Bitcoin on that. But again, nothing to say. It can't get a little counter trend rally here uh, over the next couple of weeks. Anyways, here, flipping back over to the spiders. So let's see what we're doing here. It looks like we're just holding steady here. So we've got about 15 minutes left in the trading day. Yeah, and nice little pop here overall. Little dip there into the close. Maybe just some day trading profit taking. Um, it looks like they're going to try and keep it pinned below 385 here. So maybe that's kind of max pain for OPEX. So we'll see what we get here. But overall, market is holding the gains into the close. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to see if we get some follow through next week and uh, see if this market can put in a little bit more of a summer rally. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com. Take care and I'll talk to you all next week.